in next two minutes we'll uh, start the program everyone for joining the webinar series of Pritam Advisory on the emerging theme Impetus for Investment in India. In the webinar series, we are capturing the views of industry leaders, international partners, ambassadors, bureaucrats, and policy experts on the emerging theme Investment in India coupled with Make in India. In the said theme today, the topic of the webinar is India Investment Opportunities for American Companies. I am the host for today, Kapil Mahani, CEO and co-founder of Kritam Advisory, which is a multidisciplinary firm with domain expert from various service lines. Kritam Advisory is present in India and UAE and in other countries via network partner in USA, UK, France, Australia, Malta and Portugal. Today we have with us, the panel of experts from America and India. Mr. Atman Trivedi, who is the MD of Hills and Company International Consultant. Welcome, Mr. Atman. Pleasure to be here. Ms. Tonya Nekmeel, 
she is the md of ibs and global consulting company and she is a network partner of kritam advisory in usa welcome uh, tonya thank you it's nice to be here good morning good evening we have india panelist mr hunar janu avp invest india national investment promotion agency of government of india who co-heads america's team Welcome, Mr. Hunar, and Invest India. Thank you for having me, Kapil. Uh, Honorable Jayesh Ranjan, Principal Secretary, Industries and IT, Government of Telangana. Thank you, Mr. Jayesh, uh, for your time and uh, representing uh, the Government of Telangana. Honorable Sub uh, Subramaniam Javedi, CEO. Uh, from Andhra Pradesh, she is the Commissioner of Industries. Welcome, Mr. Subramaniam. Honorable Anurag Agarwal, MD of Haryana State Industrial Infrastructure Development Corporation and Principal Secretary to Government of Haryana Election Department. Welcome, uh, Mr. Anurag. Sri Navneet Segal, Additional Chief Secretary, MSME and Export Promotion of UB. Thank you uh, all for. I, I just want to add that uh, Mr. Sagal sir couldn't be here at this moment due to a last minute hiccup. Uh, he had some official engagement, so I'm going to be representing him. Uh, I'm a part of the Invest UP team. My name is Ram Kumar. Uh, I just wanted to add that you, you can please carry on. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you all for accepting the invitation and taking your precious time for this webinar. So we'll be uh, starting this webinar on the topic, India Investment Opportunities for American Companies. With the start, uh, uh, I would like to start with Mr. Atman, who is the MD of Hills and Company, and uh, uh, he's uh, uh, playing a lead role on uh, India Investment, uh, India Matters. Thank you, Kapil. Mr. Atman is a managing director of Hills and Company and has over 20 years of high level policy, legal, and communication experience across foreign affairs, trade, and defense with a deep understanding and set of relationship in the Asia region. Earlier in the President Obama's administration, he was the chief of staff in the US State Department International Security. Atman played a lead role on India matters, including the creation of U.S.-India strategic and commercial dialogue and reimagine U.S.-India CEO forum and manage the development of comprehensive strategic plans in the key market, with the focus of Asia on Asia and Latin America. So we have uh, uh, Mr. Atman and now uh, we'll be starting by asking the question uh, from Mr. Atman about his views uh, so considering Mr. Atman yourself uh, uh, has always worked on the uh, outbound investment in foreign market, including India, and recently uh, on account of COVID, there is a massive supply chain shifting in the world. So can we say that India is going to be a preferred destination for US market to expand and shift its production? So uh, over to you, Mr. Atman, and also if you can just be a little bit uh, brief about yourself, uh, then follow up with, uh, with the answer on this. Thanks. Sure, uh, Kapil. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, you and Kritam Advisory for bringing us together. Uh, it's wonderful to be here uh, this morning or, or this evening, depending on where you are, uh, with all these uh, terrific panelists. Um, you know, to answer your question about uh, India being a preferred destination, it's it's a remarkable time right now uh, in the world. Um, we're already seeing massive investments in India in recent months uh, from the likes of American companies like Google, Amazon, and Facebook. Um, many U.S. companies are certainly taking a closer look at all that India has to offer. Uh, they see the potential size of India's market. Uh, they recognize its, its youth and uh, aspiring people, uh, the country's use of technology to innovate, 
uh, and of course the talent and, and the skill of its many workers. Uh, India, unlike some countries, is, it's not viewed as a national security threat to the United States, of course. Uh, our relations are, are quite friendly and, and amicable. There aren't concerns about forced technology transfer requirements or commercial espionage, like with other investment destinations. So the, the changing geopolitical and trade winds, they, they create a unique opportunity uh, for India. Uh, a number of US businesses um, had a positive experience uh, with Invest India uh, to address issues that arose during India's lockdown at the start of the epidemic. I think that kind of customer friendliness can go a long way in creating a positive impression. Uh, for a number of companies, it reinforced the sense that there were remarkable changes uh, underway in terms of how the government approaches uh, foreign investment and how keen it is to attract investment. Um, you know, ultimately, companies look for regulatory and legal certainty and predictability uh, before they invest billions of dollars. Uh, not surprising. Uh, businesses we work with here in Washington consider factors like the relative ease of doing business, the costs associated with land and labor, um, stable, simple, straightforward tax policies, and of course, protection of intellectual property. Uh, these are all areas that uh, the government of India has been focusing on uh, in, in recent months. Uh, and has been making uh, a progress. Some companies want to trade uh, with a market uh, first to learn more about its potential uh, before they uh, invest. And so an open orientation uh, to US imports and product standards that are generally consistent with global ones but that can help facilitate the initial commercial steps that ultimately result in large investments in India. I think many US companies have taken note of Prime Minister Modi's uh, bold call for Atmanir Bharat. They want to understand more about how they can help India achieve self-reliance and how they can align with the government's priorities uh, in this regard. Finally, I, I think it's worth noting that major changes in supply chains, they take a little bit more time than I think all of us participating in this call would wish uh, and hope. So that probably counsels in favor of just a little bit of patience and you know, doing the, the work of making sure we have consistent, coherent policy making. But overall, again, the vast majority of U.S. companies see India as a market in which they must, must have a robust presence. And I think the future uh, remains quite bright in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atman. Uh, since my, my, Mr. Atman, uh, you, have, you, have, you have seen that uh, the, the elections are on the verge uh, on the U.S. side. So does the election in the U.S. Uh, impact the U.S.-India trade and commercials? Um, and uh, uh, continuing with this, does the U.S. government offer any incentives or restrictions for U.S. companies who are looking to shift or expanded operations in India, uh, like Japan, which are offering incentives uh, uh, for the companies to, who are uh, looking to shift uh, manufacturing to India? So you're, you're right to note that we're in the heart of our political season uh, here in Washington, D.C. I think the good news for all of us who work on U.S.-India trade and, and commerce issues uh, is that it, the relationship should continue to grow no matter who wins the upcoming presidential elections. Uh, because everyone, again, recognizes India's virtually limitless uh, market potential and they want to be a part of its growth story. Um, the private sectors in both countries, not the governments, are chiefly responsible for the remarkable growth in the cross-border business relationship. Um, but I think we can all agree there's so much more we can be doing together. 
uh, the rate of future growth in trade and commerce, it will be impacted, however, by government policies, both those here in Washington uh, and in New Delhi. Uh, and then also official approaches at the subnational level as well. Um, by now, I think many of you uh, who are participating today are broadly aware of Donald Trump's uh, approach to international trade. His view tends to be a little bit more uh, transactional, uh, a bit more adversarial about uh, trade concerns and, and running trade deficits. Um, his White House imposed steel and aluminum tariffs on India, and it removed preferential trade treatment on about six billion in Indian goods uh, over trade issues. Um, so far, his negotiators are, have been working closely with Indian uh, officials, but they haven't quite yet reached an agreement on a limited trade deal. I think Vice President Biden's approach to trade uh, would be more supportive of rules uh, and market-based open trade policy. That's been the recent norm uh, in both Republican and Democratic administrations uh, since the mid 90s uh, until the current one uh, came to power. Uh, but by the same token in recent years, there's a, a sense that not everyone in, in, in the country, uh, uh, particularly those in the middle class have benefited from trade. And so Biden is focused on addressing domestic concerns uh, related to trade uh, by investing more in things like healthcare, infrastructure and education. Um, you know, things that uh, I know are very important to the Indian government as well. And he wants to make sure environmental and labor perspectives are taken into account uh, in trade agreements. I, I think the key difference between the two is that B Biden is more likely to treat India as a trade partner. That's not to say he wouldn't have policy disagreements uh, to be sure, uh, but his preference would be to would be to air them respectfully and, and quietly, as as friends tend to do. Um, on on investment, Trump's America First policy means that he's less enthusiastic about American companies investing in India. Candidly, he would like to see American businesses return home, uh, and his administration has tried to inject uncertainty into agreements. Uh, to make foreign investment more closely, uh, uh, to, to, to make foreign investment more uh, costly. Um, you know, Biden has agreed to work on immigration reform to help Indian businesses. Uh, he'll immediately revoke Trump's suspension of H-1B visas. Uh, and he wants to eliminate limits on employment-based green cards. Um, so I think while the trade and commerce relationship is going to continue to grow, regardless of who uh, is president um, in a few months, uh, there are differences among the two leaders. Thank you, Mr. Atman, uh, for your insights uh, from the America and your uh, particular field area wherein you are a uh, specialist for the India and uh, America trade. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you. So now uh, uh, the next uh, panelist we have is Ms. Tonya, uh, who is the MD of IBS Global Consulting and also a network partner of Freedom Advisor USA. Uh, she is a, a, a Tonya heads the India US desk and she is a managing director of IBS Global Consulting. She has been a part, appointed as president Northern USA India Business Council of the Women's India Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the first independent national business chamber for women in India. Tonya is a multi-award winning entrepreneur, international business expert, world traveler, author, and global champion for women's economic empowerment. The firm specializes in helping small and medium-sized companies expand into international market. Thank you, Tonya. Thank you, happy to be here. So now uh, for Tonya, we have uh, the question uh, for you is, since uh, you uh, are an international legend partner of Freedom Advisory US India Desk, 
and also the president of uh, Northern USA India Business Council. What are the kind of queries which are coming from the US client with regard to investment in India, including sectors, if you can tell, and also the business model, uh, whether kind of a contract manufacturing, JV, setting up shared service center, and how uh, your company experienced so far with regard to handling such clients. Over yeah. to you, Tony. Yeah, so great, thank you. So what we're seeing basically from the American side when it comes to US companies who are looking to do business in India, they're looking to sectors such as software development, ICT, um, agri-food, manufacturing, IT. So we've seen all of these inquiries come about. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a greater shift towards the um, production and manufacturing side uh, with the situation that's going on between the U.S. and China. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that. But just what we've seen so far has really been around the technology, um, because as you know, India is really known for, um, for its uh, knowledge when it comes to ICT, technology, IT. So we have a lot of American companies looking for partnerships. Um, in those sectors. What we do specifically um, in, in helping, whether it's a US company or an Indian company, because we do work in both directions. So we, provi we provide support to American companies looking to expand to, to the Indian market through partners such as, such as yourself, market intelligence, understanding what the market looks like because the market in India looks totally different from the American market. So making sure that they understand those differences and what that looks like. Um, partner identification, helping American companies find suitable partners, um, whether it's an agent, um, a local representative, a distributor, um, looking at JV partners. That's what we help them in identifying suitable and reputable partners that they can collaborate with on the ground. Um, also, is um, one of the things that we also provide is helping companies to set up a branch office or establishing physical presence in the Indian market. So that's just some of the basic things um, that we do. And then, of course, uh, you as our partner is there for that on, on the ground support and, and hand holding and walking them through that that entire process as they are setting up, whether it's a manufacturing plant, whether they're looking at setting up a local office uh, for support support office, those are the types of, uh, of uh, types of projects that we've seen and that we're working with closely with your firm. Okay, thank you. So uh, apart from this, do you see that uh, uh, India is a destination, preferred destination for the companies to shift or expanded operations, uh, specifically in the manufacturing lines, if someone is looking to uh, expand and shift its operations to India? What are your views on that? Yeah, I think definitely there's going to be a greater shift now. Um, I can say prior to the situation and what we've experienced with COVID um, and on the political front that a lot of companies were looking to China. But again, we're seeing that shift now that these companies are looking to India because of the educated workforce that you have there, because of the low cost manufacturing, because it's an English speaking country, um, which is important for American companies as well. Um, again, the market size, the diversity um, that you have in India, those are the key things that the companies are looking to. And I think we're going to see a greater shift from China moving production to India. Okay. Thank you, Tonya, uh, for your, uh, providing the comments uh, from the America side and India side both. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, uh, the third panelist we have with us, is uh, Mr. Hunar Janu, uh, who is the AVP Invest India. Um, Invest India is a national investment promotion agency of the government of India. And uh, he's the leading the American desk, America's desk responsible for foreign investment portfolio from the US, Mexico, and South America. So I would like to uh, thank uh, Hunar uh, and the entire Invest India team. And I would like to uh, uh, tell uh, us from Mr. Hooner as well to introduce uh, yourself and Invest India first, so that uh, this, the the viewers can know about Invest India more, uh, and also uh, particularly the role and how that they are helping uh, to the companies who are looking for expansion in India. Uh, sure, Kapil. Thank you so much for having me. 
good morning uh, and good evening to uh, all my esteemed uh, uh, co-panelists and the audience. Uh, so just a quick introduction then, uh, Kapil, as you suggested, uh, my name is Honar Janu and I co-head the America's desk at Invest India. Uh, I'll quickly go through what Invest India does uh, and uh, how my team fits into that overall picture. So Invest India is the national investment promotion agency uh, of India. I should say investment promotion and facilitation agency of the government of India. Uh, we uh, were essentially established about a decade ago uh, by, uh, by a cabinet uh, note uh, under the Ministry of Commerce. Uh, within the Ministry of Commerce, there is a department uh, called Department uh, for Promotion of uh, Industry and Internal Trade, uh, DPIIT for short. Uh, and uh, they are basically our sponsors along with a number of industry chambers. So I think that is what makes us a little unique that we are not solely um, a government organization, though we are sponsored by the, uh, by the central government. Uh, we also have in our stakeholder structure uh, industry associations and also membership from uh, state governments. So industry associations being uh, uh, the ones that you might have heard of like CII and uh, uh, FICI uh, and ASOCHAM and so on. And so that gives us uh, a balanced view or a balanced perspective of things uh, when we are talking about promoting investment and facilitating investors in India. Uh, in terms of the services we offer, uh, they are, of course, all services are uh, pro bono. Uh, so we don't charge for any of the services we offer. And the services range from uh, 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 across the investment spectrum, uh, mainly for foreign investors who are looking to invest in India. So starting from uh, just the uh, conception or inception stage where somebody is wondering whether they should invest in India, uh, all the way through to establishing uh, the investment, grounding the investment uh, to any aftercare uh, services that are needed. And I think the value we bring to the table is that uh, we are the bridge essentially between business uh, and investors on the one hand and the Indian government on the other hand, because, uh, uh, because of how we are set up, the Indian government uh, looks at us as a part of, of their structure but if you, if you talk to us or visit our office, you will be surprised uh, how corporate we are. Uh, and uh, most of our staff has, uh, has corporate backgrounds. And so we, uh, we talk uh, the language of the business and the investors. And so essentially, we, uh, that is the value we bring to the table. So uh, I, yeah, I'll, I think I'll take a pause there, Kapil. I don't want to go on too long about, uh, yes. about us. Uh, uh, of course, you know, everything is on our website and yes. uh, we can be reached quite easily. So yes. I'll take a pause there uh, and yes. uh, we'll take the conversation forward. So uh, uh, for uh, Hunar, since you are, uh, you mentioned that you are the person bridge over between the investors and uh, the government. So uh, uh, we just want to understand, first of all, uh, from you, what, that, what are the uh, India credentials with US companies in the past and what is India offering to the companies which are shifting uh, or expanding its operation from other countries after COVID period. And what comfort India is offering to those companies in terms of plug and pay model to start the operation from day one. Uh, so uh, over to you, Mr. Hunan. Yeah, Kapil, sure. So uh, I think those are all very pertinent uh, and excellent questions. Uh, in terms of uh, India's credentials for US businesses, you know, let me just take a quick step back and look at it from a, a longer perspective. Uh, so, you know, we are working internally, we are working on this uh, little booklet that is going to come out soon, where we have been researching a little about uh, US businesses in India and so on. And I think people would be surprised here who do not know that US businesses have been uh, dealing with, trading with and working in India for more than 200 years. Uh, uh, so the first one we could found we could find was uh, DuPont, uh, which had been sourcing chemicals from India as long back as the beginning of the 19th century, um, and uh, and interestingly, uh, you know there are other uh, other such uh, uh, very interesting facts. For example, uh, how many of us know that about a hundred years back, 
both Ford and GM were actually assembling cars in India, uh, both for the local market and for export. Uh, and companies like GE were building some of the greatest projects in Asia uh, back then. And so, you know, it has been it has been a long relationship where U.S. businesses uh, have not only uh, been present in India, but they have thrived, uh, thrived in India. And apart from like, I think a very brief patch, a rough patch that we saw uh, in the 70s, probably uh, apart from that, uh, U.S. businesses have really grown in India to the extent that a lot of these businesses are now household names. So people in India do not even realize that they're actually US companies. People think they're local companies, like, you know, Colgate Palmolive or, uh, you know, some other companies. Uh, and I think we, the, the reason for that, as, uh, you know, my, the previous speakers mentioned, uh, both uh, Mr. Trivedi and Ms. Tonya, is that there are always some temporary uh, rough patches but what's really important is our long-term fundamental uh, relationship, the fundamentals of the uh, economy, economic relationship, the strategic relationship, rule of law, and so on, that this, uh, this relationship rests on. Uh, and I don't need to kind of enumerate, I guess, in this meeting, everybody knows, you know, both at the demand side and the supply side, what India really offers, and, you know, uh, that it's just uh, uh, mind-boggling numbers on both sides, both in terms of consumption and supply and so on. So I think in terms of uh, credentials, we ju one just needs to step back and look at the long relationship that we have had. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, what India offers to uh, US investors or to basically any investor, foreign investor looking at India, yes. let me talk about some very specific things that uh, we... Uh, as Invest India, uh, along with the uh, along with DPIIT and the Government of India, have been doing, uh, uh, and this I think this would be helpful to many of the investors and businesses who are listening to this in the audience. Uh, so we have been working on a number of uh, projects uh, that span across the spectrum of uh, both from in terms of uh, you know easing the regulations and the, uh, the, 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 the challenges there are in doing business in India, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where we are enabling, not just enabling, but we are incentivizing businesses uh, in India. Uh, and I'll just quickly mention a few of these uh, because I don't want to take too much of time. I know there is a very esteemed uh, a list of panelists uh, right after me as well from yes. the state governments and so on. Uh, so. Um, you know, the first one, I think, and I'll talk about the recent ones. The first one, the most important, is that uh, we have set up what is known as a, uh, 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 like an empowered group of secretaries, which is he headed by the cabinet secretary. Uh, it is a committee uh, that has been set up with one sole purpose, to be extremely responsive, to make sure that the Indian government is extremely responsive to businesses and investments that are facing any kind of challenge across their journey, investment journey in India. Uh, so that it is one committee uh, and it has members from uh, all the uh, ministries at the central level, uh, the secretary level members who are the real decision makers when it comes to the Indian bureaucracy. Uh, and then within each ministry, there has been set up a team called the Project Development Cell, the PDC. Uh, the idea of this within each ministry is to identify uh, projects uh, that are uh, that are significant. Uh, uh, there are various parameters they use to evaluate that, but identify projects that are significant and then proactively suomoto uh, handhold them uh, across uh, across this investment process uh, and provide them whatever incentives are needed, uh, whatever kind of uh, even even if they are customized and so on. Uh, for them to establish and grow in India. Uh, so that's on one side. Uh, then we have a number of projects we are doing, which I would kind of club into the whole uh, digital transformation of the services that the, that the government provides. And all of our uh, state governments are partners with us on this one. So we have uh, what we, uh, uh, we're trying to establish a single window system at the national level. Now, anybody who's had any experience of doing in business, uh, business in India knows the number of approvals and clearances you have to take even before you start doing uh, business, start your operations, uh, and how you have to go from uh, uh, to, to across a number of offices and number of ministries and so on. 
we are trying to establish just one portal uh, where all these investments uh, approvals sorry would be available and the investor can figure out which approvals are applicable to him or her and not just figure it out but also apply and obtain these approvals on that portal all digital uh, and in fact the vision is that uh, you know somebody sitting in say uh, you know say new york or san francisco can just log into this portal and they can uh, online have a look at the land uh, that is available what are the facilities available uh, they can arrange video conferences video meetings with the respective uh, uh, decision makers uh, and they can do uh, all the uh, they can go through the process on this portal so that is uh, that is in progress we plan to uh, release the first version of that uh, in april next year uh, we uh, the second one we have is the industrial information system uh where uh, which was recently released uh, the first version of it was recently released by the honorable commerce minister uh, uh and it basically has what is known as the gis the geographically indicated system of mapping uh where again you know uh, it has information on all industrial clusters uh industrial land banks available in india and so on which you can access from anywhere in the world uh and go through the process of identifying land which is the most critical part of establishing any investment uh and taking approvals and so on this will be integrated with the single window system uh then we come to um you know all the uh, all the impetus that is being given to infrastructure and this is where the ppp projects come in the public private partnership the a uh, plug and play model uh, you know uh, projects around that and as you must have heard uh, in the last uh, budget speech uh, there is a pipeline already identified uh, of these infrastructure projects spanning across uh, you know uh, energy utilities roads railways uh, setting up plug and play land banks and so on that spans uh, that is a total of 1.4 trillion dollars of investment and of course the government itself is not uh, uh, is not going to do all of it it is looking actively for partnership from the private industry in establishing these projects uh, interestingly here again we have a portal called india investment grid and i would encourage everybody to have a look whoever is interested where we have listed all these projects uh, there are about i think more than 9000 projects right now that investors can have a look at across uh, uh, plug and play uh, uh, national investment pipeline non nip uh, stressed assets that are up uh, for for monetization or sale and so on um, and uh, and that, that is a massive area of uh, reform and partnership uh, uh, that can be done so i think there is a long list i'll take a pause there um, but there is a long list and we are happy to discuss them uh we are very reachable approachable uh and we are happy to discuss them with whoever is interested in going through these uh thank you uh honar uh one thing which uh, i just want uh, everyone to know about this is that uh what are the major sectors where in the investment are keep on coming even the covid because after covid there are certain kind of in the sectors where in uh, uh, there might be some challenge but i'm sure there are certain sectors even in a covid uh, the the investment has come and in fact uh, i've read somewhere that india among the world got the maximum investment uh, during the covid period in the world so uh, can you just uh, give some light on sectors as well yes absolutely i mean we have definitely seen uh, uh, a significant uh, kind of shift it's a contrasting picture uh, i would be frank with that it's a contrasting picture some sectors have seen a jump in investment and some have seen investments dwindle um and uh, i think just to quickly address your question everybody would know here i guess that uh, sectors like technology and it are the ones where we are seeing significant investment especially with you know deals in uh, uh telecom and it networks and digital infrastructure with uh, uh, the likes of facebook google amazon investing in india i think just over the last few months uh about more than 10 billion i think way more than that has been invested in that specific sector by by a number of uh these companies and overall i think we have right now more than about 22 or 23 billion dollars of investment that have been poured into these specific sectors uh pharmaceuticals is another one uh we are seeing significant interest uh 
because of the uh, short term jump in uh, in this in the demand uh, and the fact that india is uh, i think india is really the the really the one of the few that are placed to actually address that demand at the scale and the cost that it needs to be addressed at and this is not just a business question i think it's a uh, it's a it's it's a it's become a moral question really and i think that is where it is in the interest of everyone to see india being able to uh plug that demand through the supply it can generate uh there are of course concerns like mr trivedi mentioned around uh, you know property protection and so on and we should be cognizant of that uh but it's really we'll have to balance this we it's an unprecedented situation um and we have to balance that uh there is uh, interestingly there is a significant interest we have seen specifically from the us in terms of uh, defense manufacturing and defense contracting Uh, and i think that's got to do with the longer term trend uh, and i think this is where i would also like to mention look covid is a significant event and we'll all be dealing with it for the next couple of years but i don't think that changes the fundamentals really we will come out of this uh, and hopefully you know it won't change the fundamentals and so while we have to respond to it i wouldn't like to read too much into it in terms of the longer term trend Uh, you know india and us are like two massive uh, massive ships that are converging uh, i don't i don't mean to imply to crash you know <laughs> yeah. but to merge they, they we we are moving together we are converging and that trend is going to continue and we are going to overcome this transient uh, problem uh, though massive it is uh, and we are going to uh, we are going to build on it i'm sure of it thanks thanks sonal in fact uh, what you just said is that uh, we uh, we have to keep going and in fact uh, just as in fact uh, what i have uh, uh, seen in uh, one of the publication is that india has signed one defense deal on in this month only uh, with us uh, uh, specifically on the defense side and also uh, in fact when i talk about kritam as well the kritam is working and hand holding with all the players like tornya and atman and other countries as well so that the traveling when it is a challenge then uh, there is always a hand holding which needs to provide so that to uh, make the things possible without traveling for the persons and make the things happen on ground as well in india so now uh, uh, thank you hunar for your insights and invest india uh, uh, for promoting this event and make it successful and now we have with us uh, honorable jayesh ranjan uh, ji uh, he is the principal secretary industry and it government of Tal- uh, telangana uh, i welcome mr jayesh uh, uh, into this webinar and uh, giving his precious time uh, and also accepting uh, the invitation at last minute uh thank you thank you very much uh, good morning okay. good morning everyone in the us and uh, good evening to fellow panelists and uh, participants from india my name is uh, jayesh ranjan i work for the government of uh, telangana as i'm sure most of you would know india has uh, 28 states 28 provinces so some of us are going to share with you a states uh, perspective you heard about national programs like make in india self reliant india and so on and so forth but uh, most of the action happens in the states so i would like to share with you what exactly goes on in the state and how can a state uh, help american investments materialize and take off in uh, india so let me share a little bit about uh, telangana so uh, we are a state which is uh, located uh, roughly in the middle of the country this is a new state so unlike the us where uh, you have 50 perhaps 51 frozen number of states in india the constitution allows uh, new states to be constituted if there is a very strong justification so telangana got created as a new state 6 uh, years ago and uh, in the last 6 years we have uh, received almost uh, 27 billion dollars worth of uh, investments now those of you who are seasoned about uh, investment figures and investment numbers in india many of you may say that there is nothing great about there is nothing earth shattering about 27 billion in fact the three other states who are going to speak after me many of them will tell you that they have received twice that much or thrice that much also but what is remarkable about telangana's 27 billion dollar investment is that first of all See in our uh, bureaucracy, we use a term which is called conversion ratio. So, how much of the announced investment actually materialized on ground? And the typical uh, Indian experience of the last uh, three, four decades is that it is roughly around thirty percent to forty percent which materializes on ground. 
and rest of it just uh, fizzles away. So as I said, the remarkable thing about Telangana is that we have so far in the last six years, we have achieved a 82 percent uh, conversion, which is uh, unbelievable. By Indian standards, it is twice that of average. And I'm very sure that if you give us another couple of years, we will cross even 95 percent or so. So unbelievable conversion ratio, which also shows that whatever we promise, whatever we announce is actually delivered on ground. The second very remarkable thing about this uh, 27 billion investment is that almost uh, one fourth, a quarter of it, precisely 23% is repeat investment, which means that a company invested once and because it found the going to be very, very good, it invested the second time and it, it invested the third time and so on and so forth. In fact, I, I'll be happy to share with you an example of a company which may has made six investments in Telangana in the last six years. So you can imagine the level of satisfaction we provide to the companies that are investing here. The third very important thing is that uh, if you look at uh, who all are investing in Telangana, of course, large number of domestic uh, players are here, but we have been able to receive investments from 18 different countries in these last six years. And again, since I'm speaking in the American context, I'm very happy to share with you that the largest overseas investors in Telangana are American companies. And uh, just now, Hunar spoke about uh, IT investments by Amazon, Google, Facebook, etc. I, I will share a statistic which will make your eyes pop out. The statistic is like this. If you look at which are the top five uh, most valued tech companies in the world, if you just uh, go to the search and just type most valued companies in the world, six, uh, I mean, you'll see many companies in the list. One of them is a non-tech company, which is the Saudi Arabian. Aramco, but if you re remove Aramco, you will find, of course, uh, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, you'll find all, 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 all of them. And uh, Apple, of course. And the amazing thing which I want to share with you is that each of these five, the top five of uh, each of the top five, their second largest footprint in the world outside their own American headquarters is in Hyderabad. I mean, no other Indian city has uh, this kind of a distinction. That the, so Apple, for example, they're obviously their largest footprint, their largest office is in Cupertino, second largest in Hyderabad. Amazon, largest office in Seattle, second largest in Hyderabad. Google, largest office in uh, Mountain View. Now, sh let me tell you something. Google is no longer uh, second largest in Hyderabad. The Hyderabad headcount is now exceeding Mountain View headcount. We have 57,000 Google employees in Hyderabad. They don't have even these many in Mountain View. Facebook, largest in Menlo Park, second largest here in Hyderabad. Microsoft, of course, uh, largest in Redmond, but the second largest in Hyderabad. And this is, and I, the list goes on and on. If I if I go be, beyond the top five, if I want to check who else is there in the list, you'll find Salesforce, you'll find Uber, largest footprint in San Francisco, second largest in Hyderabad. Service now, largest in the US, second largest in Hyderabad. If you look at other sectors, if you look at defense and aerospace, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, GE, you name them, they have a huge manufacturing and R&D presence in Hyderabad. And there are so many other sectors also, including life sciences, where we have presence of Johnson & Johnson and others. So if you ask all these investors, what is it that brought them to Hyderabad? So when the Apple facility was inaugurated in Hyderabad, Apple has a big footprint here. Their entire maps team is located in Hyderabad. Seven, 7,000 people work out of that facility. So Tim Cook himself had come to inaugurate that facility and we had asked him, I mean, you could have gone anywhere in the world, what brought you to Hyderabad? And he shared with us in confidence, of course, but that was four years ago, so I can speak about it publicly. He had mentioned to us at that time that they evaluated 28 cities across the globe, including five, six Indian cities. And they felt that the strongest value proposition can be offered in Hyderabad. And today, and at that time we had also asked uh, Tim, what is going to be the size of this facility? And he had told that he expects around 5,000 people to work in that facility. His own estimates have been belied. They are 7,000 now and they're still growing. So if you ask any of these guys, I mean, what is it that has attracted you to India and of course to Telangana and to Hyderabad? So four or five reasons they will give. One is that we have a very progressive investment policy, a very progressive uh, investment policy. When the Prime Minister had asked, when the Prime Minister started this campaign called uh, Make in India five years ago, he wanted the states to reform. And uh, Telangana is today recognized as the state which reformed the most. In fact, 
some of the reforms which we have carried out other states could not even think of emulating them see in india it's very very this happens very quickly the moment a state comes out with a reform 10 other states copy it which is great i mean this is what competitive federalism is all about but there are certain reforms which we have brought in i mean states can't even think of getting into that kind of uh, mindset so i'll give you an example we permit companies to build their uh, factory so i told you a while ago that lockheed has a manufacturing facility here now uh, i i can share that uh, video with you i mean it is on tape lockheed's uh, indian ceo he he shared once in a open meeting that lockheed has 18 facilities across the world and he mentioned uh, in that public forum that the factory which took the least amount of time to get ready was hyderabad and the reason is that uh, in hyderabad in telangana that is we permit companies to start building the factory right on day 1 no permissions are required no approvals are required other states are still talking about simplifying permissions simplifying approvals the radicalness of our thinking is that we have done away with permissions and approvals no approval is required you take your land and from the same evening you can break the ground and start construction of course it doesn't mean that you don't require any permission at all any approval at all the law of our state tells you that you need all these approvals and permissions when you are ready with the commercial production and there also we guarantee that all these permissions and approvals will be given to you on the 15th day if you do not get it on the 15th day you can start your commercial production on the 16th day and no question will be asked and uh, we have another uh, feature in our uh, investment policy which is that for some reason if we delay if we are not able to commit our uh, approvals and permissions in 15 days we conduct an, an internal inquiry to find out who is the person responsible for that delay and for instance if it is found that i delayed it by 4 days 4 days of my salary will be deducted and given to that company and uh, you may think that it is a joke it looks very good uh, to write it on paper and tom tom it but i can share this with you that on seven occasions we have penalized officers for delaying of course i was never penalized i i am careful about these matters but uh, five six of my colleagues uh, faced this penalty of two days salary cut or four days salary cut of course deducting 1000 rupees from my salary or 2000 rupees from my salary is no big deal but it's a matter of accountability that if i promise something am i am i living it living up to it or not so this is one feature which everyone appreciates a lot the second is the infrastructure support that we provide we have uh, strategically located industrial parks the largest industrial land bank in the country and uh, very good uh, uh, infrastructure support in form of water power 24 by 7 dedicated power supply and so on and so forth so uh, that is the other feature the third thing is that most of our uh, industrial parks are located close to the city of hyderabad if you go to some other state they may tell you that okay our industrial park is 700 kilometers from our uh, capital you may have to go to another uh, part of our state but our being a compact state everything is located in and around hyderabad and hyderabad is uh, rated year after year after year as the best indian city in terms of quality of living and uh, lots of these uh, international companies global companies they find this also the value proposition in terms of infrastructure of hyderabad high quality infrastructure at a very very affordable cost as a very strong value proposition so in the technology world since uh, no one from uh, karnataka government is here so i can share this with you very frankly at the end of it it becomes a choice between hyderabad and bangalore because bangalore also has a very strong reputation of being the technology hub of uh, the country and hyderabad rivals it but off late in the last 5 6 years as i said i noticed that lots of people move away from bangalore because of the extremely low value proposition on infrastructure the traffic congestion the pollution the cost of prohibitive cost of infrastructure etc drives them to hyderabad so for example this is the office space that i have in hyderabad and there is a comparable office space in bangalore in bangalore i will be paying twice the rent as compared to hyderabad and i'll be getting only half the infrastructure so that value proposition is very strong talent is another very winning feature for hyderabad we offer the best quality talent as i told you apple selected hyderabad after comparing it with 28 cities and talent uh, won the game for us hyderabad uh, apple felt that because they have set up their maps team here gis is a very important requirement for them and they felt that the best gis guys anywhere in the world 
are in Hyderabad. So, and we also have a government institution called TASC, the Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. So, if, for instance, Apple finds that there are certain skill sets which are missing in the students or the freshers who are coming out in the job market. This institution teaches them while they are completing their education and makes them job ready so that they can be deployed on projects right on day one. Now, uh, the other very uh, important uh, feature about Telangana's investment policy is the package of incentives that I give. Now, you will listen after me, three other, uh, listen to after me, three other states. They will all tell you about incentives. They give this waiver, they give this uh, concession and so on and so forth. Let me be honest and upfront about it that the incentives in all the Indian states, at least the front running industrial uh, in the Indian states are more or less the same. There is just a fraction difference here and there. Someone may offer you a better tax return. Someone may offer you a little bit more of power uh, tariff concession. But if you look at the totality of the package, then what we offer in Telangana is amongst the best in the country. But we have another very important feature in our industrial policy, which is that if an investor tells us that another state is offering X to him, I will be willing to either meet it or beat it. If he tells me that Bangalore government is offering me this package, I will close my eyes and sign on it. There is no negotiation, no discussion, no give and take. We have this meet or beat policy. And again, this is something which we have applied in a few cases. And we have been very successful in wooing away investments which were committed to, to some other uh, states. And of course, the last thing which I'll share with you is that uh, Telangana being in the center of the country has a uh, logistics advantage. We are uh, all the e-commerce companies. So Amazon, for example, their largest fulfillment center, their warehouses are called fulfillment center. The largest of them in Asia, not just in India, is located in Hyderabad. And there are all other e-commerce players also, including Walmart, etc. They have voted on their feet to put their uh, logistics facilities here. The government is also very proactive towards the industry. There have been perfect labor relations, harmonious uh, worker labor employee relations in, in the last six years. Government proactively intervenes if there is a, even the smallest hitch which is faced by anyone. So uh, for all these reasons, as I said, Telangana has become the go-to destination. We have uh, 14 priority sectors in which we look for investments. But I'll tell you about six of them, which are the most uh, fetching for the for the state the first one is of course it and all i already shared with you the five of the top five have largest footprints in the state second is electronics manufacturing third is aerospace and defense hyderabad is also the life sciences biotechnology and vaccines capital of the world you will be again amazed to learn that one third of world's vaccines are manufactured in hyderabad the entire africa supply of vaccine goes from hyderabad including hiv aids vaccines and so on and so forth in addition, we are also very keen to receive investments in food processing, in textile, in uh, in uh, plastics and chemicals, and so on. So uh, I'll stop here. What I'll do is that I'll also uh, type my mail ID, my contact details in the chat box. And if you want to reach out to me at any point in time, please uh, feel free to do so. Of course, uh, very happy to uh, link uh, up with you through Kritam as well. Uh, they have done a fantastic job in putting together this seminar. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jayesh, uh, for the uh, insightful. And in fact, I must uh, say that the kind of passion is uh, more like uh, running a company, wherein the CEO of the company is uh, so passionate to bring the business on the plate. Uh, uh, the similar kind of passion I can very well see uh, in your words uh, and the, the credentials which uh, state has earned. So I just want to one thing, if you can uh, tell to everyone about uh, the ease of doing business ranking, uh, which Telangana has earned uh, recently. So uh, just one, uh, yes, because already the time has, uh, so if you can See, mention your... Telangana is a very strong performer on ease of doing business. We have the third rank this year. We were second last year and first uh, the year before, but... The difference between first, second, third, and potentially even fourth, fifth is very, very narrow. So uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Subramaniam will tell you that he's number one, but it doesn't mean that they are outperforming us uh, greatly. It's a matter of uh, fractions. And uh, as I told you, uh, I wish uh, Subramaniam uh, well, but uh, by and large, uh, don't go by these kind of uh, rankings alone. For instance, uh, the other industry-friendly states like Gujarat, 
Karnataka, Maharashtra, they are in the 10s and 20s and all. But it doesn't mean that uh, no one should go to Gujarat, no one should go to Maharashtra. I mean, these are numbers which look uh, good on newspaper headlines. But you should do your own due diligence of what works. Yes. On the Please take help of uh, Hunar, who will be able to give you a more uh, realistic perspective on what uh, happens in uh, Indian states. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jayesh. So now uh, we have uh, with us another panelist, uh, uh, Honorable Subramanyam Javedi, uh, who is the CEO of Andhra Pradesh Economic Development Board, Government of Andhra Pradesh, and Commissioner of Industries, AP. Uh, welcome, Mr. Subramanyam. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Kapil. Good morning to all the uh, investors and uh, friends from uh, US, and good evening to all the fellow panelists. Um, let me tell you, this is a wonderful um, uh, session to participate and, uh, and also the two speakers before me has made my job much more easier. One, because uh, Invest India, the counterpart for Invest India is uh, AP Economic Development Board, um, um, for which I am heading as a CEO. And of course, I'm also the Commissioner of Industries. My name is Subramanian Javadi. And um, the principal secretary of Telangana has made my life uh, easier, more, much more easier, because Andhra Pradesh and Telangana were one state at one point in time, and it was um, uh, a friendly division which happened about six years back. So all the advantages um, are shared by both the states. Let me tell you that uh, every fourth person working in uh, um, uh, in the Silicon Valley belongs to the Telugu-speaking community. So that is the kind of uh, prowess uh, that the Telugu speaking uh, states uh, share. And I'm very happy that he has uh, uh, projected the entire uh, gamut of opportunity and the kind of strength that uh, um, the, uh, the Telugu speaking states have got. But uh, to be very specific uh, as to what Andhra Pradesh has got to offer and the kind of uh, ecosystem and opportunities, I'll be, I'll be very brief. Um, just for the convenience of uh, the participants, I'll run you through a presentation uh, which will um, uh, give you a flavor of uh, what Andhra Pradesh can offer uh, uh, for uh, investments uh, from the US, investors from the US. And of course, yes, we are very proud uh, to state that we are the first uh, ranked state on the ease of doing business. And this is a rank which we have been continuing for the last four years. And we, uh, we value this um, uh, a lot because uh, this is a ranking which has been given by the World Bank and uh, the investor community has vouched for this. So um, the Andhra Pradesh-US relationship uh, has always been an upward trajectory. And uh, let me tell you, uh, 40 of the top Fortune 500 companies operate in the state of Andhra Pradesh. There, it's a continuous uh, engagement. The One of the largest FDIs into the state of Andhra Pradesh uh, has been from the US and of course uh, uh, from uh, Korea as well and Japan. So these are the three major uh, FDI investment uh, which have come into the state of Andhra Pradesh. And um, uh, the leading brands um, uh, are uh, for all of you to see, be it Mondelez, IFF, Kellogg's, PepsiCo, and um, there is a big defense collaboration happening um, uh, with the state of Andhra Pradesh um, uh, as well. We have participated in the Defense Expo last time. And uh, on the left, you see our Honorable Chief Minister. And on the right, you see our uh, Minister for Industries. So as I told you, uh, the largest Telugu diaspora, uh, diaspora in US belongs to the Telugu speaking states. And this was the, this is a photograph uh, from uh, the meeting uh, address of uh, our Honorable Chief Minister at Chicago last August, and uh, the kind of audience, the kind of uh, um, uh, presence of uh, the diaspora there was really electrifying. Um, now, what makes Andhra Pradesh uh, one of the best states for investment? We have a robust policy framework and a transparent government. See, here, when we speak of transparency, every other uh, every other person would speak of transparency in government and the policy continuity. Um, uh, let me let me put it this way: the manifesto, the election manifesto of the government uh, of the day, uh, is put on a public website, and uh, ninety percent of the manifesto items have already been completed in the first year of our government. So that is the kind of uh, uh, promise that we do, and the kind of delivery that we make, and um, uh, we we. The, the entire 
the entire transparency in government stands testimony for that very fact and uh, of course we are like telangana we are investing a whole lot into our uh, skill development uh, centers for building industry for skills we uh, we are a state uh, which has got uh, one of the largest export potential because uh, we have the largest port like coastline at, uh, on the east coast of uh, india 40% of our exports uh, go to the us in terms of fishery shrimps probably uh, uh, probably when you go to a market and buy a shrimp uh, in all probability it would be it would have been exported uh, from uh, uh, india and even from within india from the state of andhra pradesh so that is the kind of uh, export prowess that we enjoy and of course bulk drugs generics it it enabled services there are exports uh, which are happening and uh, andhra pradesh has got the india's first uh, medtech zone which is uh, very futuristic and uh, where um, uh, which is collaborating with four uh, incubators uh, in the us and almost 80 companies operate out of this medtech zone so i'll i'll just uh, take the agenda on to three uh, fold one how we dealt with covid because that's an important uh, uh, black swan event uh, which we are all facing um, and of course an overview brief overview of the industrial ecosystem in ap and our single desk system which you would definitely be interested to know and uh, focus on and, and something on our focus sectors and uh, here you see that uh, the uh, um, uh, the country as a whole um the media declared andhra pradesh as one of the most successful lockdown states this is a state which has done the highest amount of tests we are comparable to any european uh, european country so uh, we are almost uh, 10 times more than what is the indian average of uh, tests and uh, for that uh, this has this has been widely acknowledged and during the lockdown and post lockdown the kind of support that has been given to the industries operating in the state have um, testimonials which you can see now the industrial uh, ecosystem that operates in the state of andhra pradesh um, uh, as i told you we are uh, the second longest coastline in india and the longest on the east coast which uh, gives a great opportunity for uh, uh, export oriented units for uh, units which would like to import raw material into uh, the state like the electronics uh, even the bulk drugs you would be you would be having that opportunity uh, of logistics convenience uh, and uh, six operational ports and six operational airports three of them international airports so the length and breadth of the state uh, is uh, covered by industrial corridors the visakhapatnam chennai industrial corridor and the chennai bangalore industrial corridor which would uh, give you uh, a which with what wherever you go in the state you would get an industrial ecosystem in place with specific products so now um, uh, this this presentation i would share and i would not uh, uh, wait here so yes we are uh, i will i will just take a minute to speak on our ease of doing business in the last 3 years when we speak of ease of doing business it is the real ease of doing business that we are speaking because uh, any investor coming to the state with a proposal for approvals 21 days under the law the public service delivery guarantee act with a penalty of course is uh, there uh, uh, as a legal framework and within 21 days if the approvals are not given there is a provision for deemed approvals and uh, our performance has been 99.7% on our slas and 11 day average time is the time taken for approval so which means you come be uh, and you start that's the kind of an approach that we follow and um, this is a power surplus state 21 gigawatts of uh, power huge industrial land bank 40000 plus acres of industrial land bank skill development centers high end uh, electronic skill university coming up and industrial corridors and uh, this is the knowledge hub you would see in my next slides where i would show you the kind of engineering prowess and the kind of uh, education prowess that this state enjoys so uh, i i spoke about this i'm not going to speak more 21 days we have a dedicated investor facilitation center single desk bureau and uh, our rejections are as low as 0.9% and average uh, time taken just 11 days so that's what makes the state of andhra pradesh uh, number 1 in the in the ease of doing business rankings and we value this now uh, under the new investment new industrial policy we have set up business enablement centers both at the district headquarters and at the state headquarters uh, in the name of ysr ap1 
which would take care of everything right from the start of business to uh, land allotment to facilitation of approvals then hand holding and also in case uh, um, uh, the, the marketing support and in case if someone goes bad or sick then the revitalization as well so there is a whole lot of uh, uh, services happening under one umbrella which is called the ysr ep1 now competitive advantage what does uh, the state of andhra pradesh offer when uh, compared to other states i am not making a comparison here to uh, other states because uh, we are one of the lowest in parameters of uh, labor wage water charges land cost we are uh, either comparable or much lower than uh, the um, uh, than the some of the other industrialized states um, but i am not making a comparison here because we are looking india as a whole but let me tell you that uh, the kind of uh, land that is available industrial land bank that is available uh, is uh, in plenty and you would see uh, developed lands it's not just undeveloped lands but developed lands with trunk infrastructure available with the skilled manpower ready to occupy so uh, and industrial zoning is one thing which have which we have come up recently so that you set up a, a, a company in a particular zone and then tomorrow uh, some uh, uh, industrial disaster or some kind of an environment disaster happens and uh, you you have a risk at uh, hand so we are doing the industrial zoning and uh, we'll tell you which type of industries which type of sectors can come where and this the, the entire idea is to provide a complete risk free environment uh, to the investors uh, in an investor friendly manner so as i told you we are the knowledge hub we have the biggest uh, uh, working age population 71% more than 368 engineering colleges 24% of the it engineers in india are from the state of andhra pradesh and in fact many of the it engineers working uh, in hyderabad also hail from the uh, also hail from andhra pradesh and we are proud of proud about that um so we have international collaborations and uh, um institutional collaborations um, uh, with these uh, education institutions making it uh, more academia industry connect so we feature among the top 10 places for manufacturing uh, this was a study done by invest india and jll and uh, we fall uh, we are one of the 10 great places for manufacturing in the country and uh, let me quickly wrap up with the industrial policy incentives of course uh, many many states are comparable uh, to the industrial policy incentives i would i would I, what i would think is uh, many companies wouldn't come for incentives but it would be coming for the ecosystem that uh, operates in the state uh, industrial ecosystem but there are uh, par reimbursements 100% sgst reimbursements and uh, rebate in land cost the most important thing is uh, we offer land on a lease come sale basis which means when you start up obviously you can take the land on lease operate it uh, uh, for a period of time for 10 years and then go for a buy so which means that your initial cost of investment would go down and um, uh, the land becomes yours after a point in time so this is uh, this this has been widely appreciated in the investor community of late and uh, on the focus sectors we have um, uh, we have 10 focus sectors pharmaceuticals um, as i told you uh, we export 16% of the india's production uh, comes from the state of andhra pradesh more of them on the us fda approved um, uh, pharmaceutical units we have pharma parks uh, with the common facility center ctps um, and um, uh, it's 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 very much there the ampz done the ap medtech zone is what i already told you uh, food processing uh, yes we are a leader because uh, we are the india's largest producer of eggs mango papaya chili lemon and of course being a coastal state we are first on the coastal and freshwater aquaculture and as i told you 46% of uh, the shrimp exports from the country indian uh, uh, indian subcontinent goes from andhra pradesh um, and of course there are a whole lot of uh, opportunities for investment in terms of packaging cold chain food testing laboratories etc and the key investments i am showing you on the Uh, the marquee investors who are already available in the state uh, electronics uh, again uh, every second we man we assemble a mobile phone in the state of andhra pradesh uh, the uh, the the largest uh, uh, contract manufacturers for apple foxconn operates uh, out of uh, andhra pradesh we have electronic manufacturing clusters and clusters of japanese taiwanese chinese and south korean and we have a special package for the electronic manufacturing clusters and uh, components 
um, of course aerospace and defense it's a niche area which we are uh, developing textiles we are the seventh largest producer of cotton and uh, the 3.6 million spindles uh, operate in the state of ap um, uh, we have uh, uh, prowess on spinning ginning and uh, slowly moving into technical textiles so uh, uh, this is a key, key opportunity that uh, us companies would be having the one of the largest uh, automobile manufacturers of korea kia has set up shop in andhra pradesh last uh, in the last two years and let me tell you a success example just within a span of 14 months from the date of signing of the mou the investment was grounded and it's a 2 billion dollar investment which got uh, uh, grounded in straight 14 months so that's the kind of uh, um, uh, a modeling that we do in case any big investors would like to come and set up so um, wisac is a growing a tier 2 um, city on it and it electronic services and uh, we are rated one of the best state in skill development uh, uh, with the skill university coming up in uh, visakhapatnam of course we have uh, uh, the uh, the collaborations with ibm siemens and uh, uh, many many others and um, in the interest of time i wouldn't go into this we are a power surplus state and there are opportunities on investments in power sector Uh, we are going in for a complete renovation of our grid, and uh, so the grid uh, modernization and also our agriculture grid uh, uh, separation uh, will throw up opportunities uh, to the tune of almost ten thousand crores in the last next two years time for companies coming and investing in the state of Andhra Pradesh. And we have a make in uh, we have a make in India policy, and we also have a make in AP policy wherein there is a price. preference uh, for of about 5% 20 almost 20% for indian companies and 5% for people in andhra pradesh who would uh, be investing in the state of uh, there is a price point preference so all this is there on the platter for investors uh, from uh, uh, us and um, for any kind of a support we are there we are we are there on the single window we are there uh, at the touch of um, uh, uh, click of a mouse we are there and we will have the quickest response possible thank you very much thank you mr subramanyam for your time uh, and accepting the invitation and uh, for the insightful knowledge uh, uh, we'll surely uh, the kind of knowledge which you just shown uh, and also insights about the states uh, will be very helpful for the investors and as well as uh, we'll be circulating this video specifically for each state to all the investors uh, via our partners uh, uh and specifically and we'll uh, surely come back uh, with specific uh, queries from the investors thank you for your time uh, uh next we have with us mr anurag agarwal uh, shri anurag agarwal md of haryana state industrial infrastructure development corporation and principal secretary to government haryana election department uh welcome mr uh, uh anurag agarwal uh is mr anurag here i think uh, uh, we can uh, uh, there is there might be some uh, delay on it customer ki nahi to usse farak nahi usse to tds benefit mil jayega hello uh yes so uh, now uh, we have uh, one uh, with us uh, next go to the uttar pradesh so we have with us representative from uh, up who will be uh, uh, providing the insight uh, will be uh, giving the insights about incentives offered by the state for the foreign investors uh, over to you uh. Well, uh good morning and good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you kapil my name is ram kumar and i work for the invest up team uh, i wish uh, mr navneet segal could be here but uh, due to some uh, uh, official exigencies uh, he couldn't be over here now before i go into the details about uh, invest uttar pradesh and um, how tremendous up is doing i just want to present a two minute uh, investment pitch uh, that represents on what is going on so far So let me just share the screen.
So this was a short pitch uh, from uh, Uttar Pradesh uh, state part of view. So before I go into a presentation on explaining uh, why Uttar Pradesh, uh, just a quick uh, uh, recent uh, happenings uh, that has happened so far. So Uttar Pradesh is now ranked second in terms of ease of doing business. Uh, so we just uh, lack uh, uh, a rank behind Andhra Pradesh. Uh, just because we fall short of one uh, one reform that uh, we are on the verge of uh, implementing it, and uh, there have been and the major reasons for jumping from rank 12 to second is uh, the Nivesh Mitra, the single window portal that has acted as a, that has acted as a major catalyst in uh, uh, in providing 94% uh, no objection certificates to uh, at least 2.3 lakh investors, and uh, uh, we are already in the uh, segment of uh, making reforms for the BRAC 2021 uh, uh, segments, where we have already implemented 170 out of 301 uh, parameters uh, that has been uh, fulfilled by uh, Nivesh Mitra. Uh, so these are few of the major highlights that why Uttar Pradesh has jumped on so far on rankings from 12 to second. Uh, let me just uh, go towards a short pitch on talking about uh, the infrastructure and uh, the ease of doing business and uh, uh, the skilled labors of Uttar Pradesh and uh, and some swift approvals that has been uh, setting examples. I hope the presentation is visible to everyone. Yes, yes. So, yes. So, uh, uh, Invest UP uh, uh, dedicated uh, desk that has been uh, a four country desk have been developed so far. Uh, Sri Navneet Segal handles the USA desk uh, and uh, he's taking care of the investments uh, coming from Europe as well as from America. So, on talking about why uh, Uttar Pradesh as compared to other states is because, uh, of course, uh, incentives is one thing that is provided by or on a similar uh, levels by all of the states, but what sets UP apart is a huge, humongous consumer base, but 230 million population. I mean, for any industries to come, you need a domestic consumer base, which UP already provides. And if we talk about uh, the GDP, uh, 250 million uh, billion dollar GDP, it's the size comparable to that of a Czech Republic. And it's uh, also the third most uh, visited uh, state in India by the foreign visitors. And when we talk about seamless connectivity in India, uh, a lot of industrial corridors pass through Uttar Pradesh. We almost 57% of its catchment area falls under the uh, Eastern Western corridor comes under Uttar Pradesh. And we have an extensive uh, broad uh, railway networks. We have uh, uh, eight airports in the pipeline, the seven uh, international airports already. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one of the fastest expressways in India, the Lucknow Agra Expressways, uh, built in a record time. So that is uh, one thing in terms of infrastructure and connectivity that Uttar Pradesh has to offer. And when we talk about the three L advantage, the land, labor, and the logistics, so I'm sure uh, all of the states have enough land uh, bank available. So UP is also one among them. And when we talk about uh, labor, yes, of course, UP, if you compare, we have got one of the cheapest and uh, the most humongous uh, labor population. Uh, I mean, uh, we are the highest in number of uh, MSMEs, almost, uh, we are the India's largest, we have the India's largest share of MSMEs, 9 million MSMEs, and still there are a lot of UP workers that go to other states, irrespective uh, uh, of we have uh, we having so many number of ancillary units uh, because of the cheap labor that's available in Uttar Pradesh. And uh, apart from that, uh, where we have a multi-modal logistic ports located at various parts, as you can see in the map, uh, spread across from the north to the south of uh, Uttar Pradesh. And when we talk about other factors, uh, is like uh, number one state in terms of uh, having the number of MSMEs, and uh, we are number one state in terms of mobile production volume. Almost 40% is produced in uh, Noida. Uh, and Noida is also the recipient of uh, India's largest space manufacturing program beneficiary. Uh, it's an electronics hub. We are the destination to Asia's one of the largest airports, the Jawar International Airport. Uh, it's going to supersede the Indira Gandhi National Airport with the six runways, uh, one by the going to be developed by the Zurich International Airport. And uh, we are the terminus to the 
uh, largest defense corridor now uh, you might be knowing that uh, there are two defense corridors that are going to be that have been uh, declared by the government of india one in uttar pradesh and one in tamil nadu in terms of uh, uh, the area catchment uh, uttar pradesh is the largest with uh, across uh, six nodes proposed across uttar pradesh in terms of textiles we are the second largest uh, we are one of the largest uh, manufacturing of textile and the second largest of course kanpur and uh, agra is very well known for its leather uh, production when we talk about power supplies we have a 26.5 gigawatt uh, uh, power installed power capacity and we are undoubtedly one of the largest agri producers we are agri uh, we are uh, the uh, kind of mixed agricultural industrial economy i mean we produce 19% of the agri production in india uh, highest number of potatoes third largest producer of uh, guavas or uh, when you say mangoes uh, uttar pradesh is to be named in fact pepsico is uh, was delighted to uh, invest more than 500 crores for uh, wafers manufacturing for the wafer manufacturing here in uh, uttar pradesh it was uh, quite, he, uh, the the ceo was quite delightful in its experience in coming in uttar pradesh that it has its plan to expand uh, by by investing 400 crores more uh, uh, owing to the government's extensive support that has been provided uh, we are amongst the top 6 uh, uh, exporters in uh, india and uh, of course we are the india's largest one of the largest horticulture hub in india when we talk about conducive business environment uh, we have uh, almost the same kind of uh, uh, ease of approvals and the single window portals that i'm sure the other states are pitching in as well but uh, what sets us apart is also that we are coming with a new msme act uh, based on which uh, any unit uh, can establish with uh, and it will receive an acknowledgement certificate within 72 hours Uh, so it's uh, ready get set to go within 72 hours and they need not run across any departments for any approvals for 900 days that's almost 3 years so this is one thing that uh, uh, uttar pradesh is uh, working on and is uh, very soon uh, going to come up with that and uh, we are coming out also with a set of policies for that and of course when we say about we have reformed quite a number of labor laws so this uh, we have eliminated few uh, redundant labor registrations that need not be done so that is one thing that we have uh, done uh, and uh, when we talk about certain incentives and policies it will be very elaborate and comprehensive and uh, we have more than 20 plus sector uh, uh, sector specific lucrative policies uh, we you can uh, i can share across to you uh, the email id for nivesh mitra portal where you can find the list of policies across various sectors to various departments all in a single portal over there i can share across to you the website and when we talk about uh, the india us economic relations of course we know the sectors of fti investment and the uh, bilateral trade that has so uh, so far happened uh, but when i talk about uttar pradesh what uh, we have been uh, exclusive in terms of exporting to usa uh, the major part uh, goes to the textile apparel, apparel and clothing so we have got a extensive uh, manufacturing of textiles hub Uh, numerous spindles across the state uh, articles of iron steel and aluminium uh, rank second uh, from uh, uttar pradesh to be exported to uh, usa uh, we are very exclusive in the manufacturing of carpets now the hand woven carpets of badohi are uh, are of world class and uh, it is being incentivized with uh, uh, an msme program one of its kind in india called odop one district one product um but this program has uh, gained so much name and fame and reputation for itself that is uh, going to be adopted by the central government and it's going to be spread across all throughout uh, uh, india the states are in uh, debates and discussions with the central government in uh, uh, in asking uttar pradesh the insights and the knowledge on how we have implemented such an uh, 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 such a program under msme so these are few of the top exports from usa Uh, a top exports from Madhya Pradesh to USA. Now, why I show the show you the slide is because uh, these are COVID times, and uh, USA and many other countries have been hugely reliant on on China for uh, imports on uh, textiles or when you say uh, medical pack uh, medicaments, apparels and furnitures and footwears and uh, horticulture. Now, India shares uh, a, a very less share. 
of uh, three to seven percent in all of these articles mentioned. Now this is a time for uh, USA to look upon to India as a plus one supply chain uh, rather than going to China. So uh, and Uttar Pradesh being uh, already an uh, exporter of uh, such products and we are ha having uh, uh, a trade relationship on uh, the, these products before. So Uttar Pradesh has a natural advantage of uh, supplying these products uh, to USA. So when I talk about the detail uh, uh, sector-wise opportunities, uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we can uh, we can wrap up uh, since we are uh, we are just coming. Uh, we can circulate this presentation. I can circulate this presentation. Uh, yes, but, that would uh, be one, uh, that we we can circulate this deck since this is a uh, detailed deck. So we can okay. run it uh, after that, and uh, we have to go to the Haryana since we are running all, almost out of the time. So okay. uh, thank you uh, uh, for providing the presentation on UP and Invest UP. Um, uh, in fact, each and every state, uh, I would like just to apprise that everyone that each and every state and UT of India is uh, having their own sector expertise. So if you talk about in terms of uh, uh, the UP, that's uh, the mobile phone productions, the textile, that is more we uh, the other uh, two states already spoken about and in fact uh, every state is contributing some level of company some level of uh, sectors and then and that's why in fact Kritam advisory have made a uh, presentation and in fact on the website as well they have linked the three things together now uh, from the state the sectors and then sectors to the companies which are already there uh, into that state uh, and we have uh, one of the state which is UP already there and in fact the kind of presentation which you just shown will be circulating and now now we have one person a representative from Haryana uh, 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 <clears throat> thanks, I, Kapil. Uh, thanks Kapil I'm Sanjay Gar first of all uh, hi Sanjay uh, Mr. Sanjay uh, welcome uh, uh, to this webinar and uh, over to you for the presentation and uh, any any specific uh, things on the Haryana state uh, insightful for the American and foreign investors. Yes, yeah, sure, Kapil. Uh, first of all, namaskar to all the participants. And uh, my apologies, are, uh, Mr. Anurag Garkwal, uh, our MD, he couldn't join because he's stuck up in some meeting. Since I think we are already running short of time, I'll give you a quick overview of Arana and which sectors uh, we can offer you. Arana uh, is Two-third of Harana, <clears throat> it lies in the NCR region, and 30 districts of Harana are part of the NCR. And NCR alone provides access to 11% of Indian market. Uh, we, we are connected with uh, two international airports, five civil airports. Uh, we have 26,000 kilometers of total road network. Uh, we are nine ICDs. Uh, Harana is home to 80% of the excavators, manufacturers, 52% of the cranes, 33% of the two-wheeler manufacturing, and 50% of the cars manufacturing. We have leading manufacturers of footwear, leading manufacturers of sanitary wear, uh, other sectors where we are interested in, or we have expertise, is agribusiness, say agriculture implements, uh, food processing, dairy, apart from what we have the core competencies. Already a large number of US companies are present in Haryana, like PepsiCo, uh, McKinsey, American Express, City, Amazon. Uh, like uh, all my uh, other colleagues who have mentioned about the ecosystem, Haryana offers equally good uh, ecosystem. We have HEPC, which is Haryana Enterprise Promotion Center, uh, which is the single big window platform. We commit uh, one day to 30 days uh, assured approvals in case approvals are not coming. It, it is given to you as deemed approval. So we, Harana, uh, in Harana, we have ready infrastructure, ready availability of uh, plotted colonies. You can start your factory uh, from day one itself. We offer land on different models. We, you can own it, you can lease it, you can uh, start uh, uh, on uh, built-up premises also. There are a large number of industrial estates where uh, the entrepreneurs have already constructed the buildings which are uh, available for uh, available as ready infrastructure as a plug-and-play system. Uh, coming to the... Thanks, thanks. 
thanks uh, mr uh, sanjay for uh, providing the insights of the state and we will be sharing the detailed insights uh, uh, or over the email to all the participants sure. and as well as to the investors uh, by taking the relevant material uh, uh, from the stake uh, stakeholders as well and in fact uh, thank you everyone and in fact uh, i request uh, uh, my uh, team as uh, to uh, as well uh, to uh, they can just switch on the camera so that uh, the team can uh, come uh, uh, and uh, thanks everyone now for your participation mr atman honor uh, tonya and all the state uh, officers uh, and representative uh, for uh, coming and providing the insights uh, about their state as well as about india uh, so kritam uh, advisory again uh, uh, plays a vital role and working on the theme of impetus and uh, hand holding the companies uh, right from day one uh um, and working with the organizations uh, uh to support uh, uh, of invest india because they are the they are the organization wherein the the things has to move on along with the state uh, stakeholders so uh, we are the even the channel to make the things happen uh, at a hand holding level you know, with the uh, with the organizations with the government organizations uh, of india uh thank you everyone uh, thanks devain uh, thanks devdeep uh, uh, and uh, uh who has made all efforts to invite all the uh, speakers uh, for this webinar uh, uh, at a very short span of time thank you everyone thank you so much uh, mr honor thank you so much mr jais and thank you mr uh, subramaniam ji for coming to the webinar and thank you all other participants to uh, attend the webinar i'm i'm a senior investment lead in kritam advisory thank you so much have a good night uh yes and two uh, two words from devain uh, who is a co-founder yeah. with pitam advisory uh, uh, to, with today's uh, discussion like i have more worked on the business side more on the structuring side and with this discussion today we have want to just say one thing that whole india is now it's like a, every state is one of the one have their own competition every state has their, it's like a one company which they are running and they are coming up with the incentives and it's good so that competition competition it's always going to help the economy as as well as the employment also and other parts right and with the help of invest india and other state benefits india is going to be the next uh, uh, it's a developing nation and it is going to be the next developed nation and uh, that's what i want to just stand up thanks and in fact uh, i i must say that invest india is playing a vital role in making the competition among the peers uh, of the states Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Tonya. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.